everybody, I'm Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and today we're here at part two of our sisterhood video. We stopped about the halfway point last class, and this was to allow you guys to really get a chance to get everything laid in correctly, work out some of those new concepts like gridding, um, some really fun sky techniques that we learned how to do. So it, when you're when you're painting along, sometimes it's nice to have a minute to process something. On the mic is my husband, John. Hey, guys. He keeps me from being tongue-tied. It's pretty great. <laughs> but today, we're going to be taking the painting on, and I wanted to talk a little bit about this idea of an underpainting and sort of an ugly duckling stage. You know, to get here from here, right, what that really is is that acrylic paintings need at least three values to really look finished and whole. And unlike other mediums, we really have to concentrate and focus on how we're going to get those three values. So what I mean by that is we need a dark value, like a black, a middle gray value, and a light value. And when you can get those three values into the painting, it starts to come together. But since acrylic paintings start with the dark tones, your painting may have an ugly stage. That's normal. It's natural. It's just a part of growing up. And so I don't want you to feel awkward or weird about it. I want you just to take a deep breath and realize that now we're going to be getting into those middle values, some of those sharp line details, and those highlights that pull a piece together all of a sudden as if by magic out of the blue. So are you guys ready to finish these sisters and knock this out of the park? Yes. Okay. Let's just hop right on it. Okay. Bye, beautiful sisters. You come sit over here so I remember what the heck I did last time. So we left our last class in this space. We removed our grid. We had our girls basically blocked in. And what blocking means is I'm like, a shape about this size will be here and a shape about this size will be here. Now, a little trick that I like to do is I tend to come in a little bit inside the space that I expect an object to take so I have a little room to work with. It's really easy to add elements, but sometimes in acrylic painting, it's troublesome to take them away. So by giving myself that space and working that out, I really have the ability to just add where I need to and not struggle too much. So hopefully you're having that as well. But remember, as long as acrylic paint is dry, you can just paint over it. Uh, let's look at the materials we have out. We have pretty much the same as last time, and we're going to be using the same brushes. I had all of the materials I used listed at the beginning. And if you go to the description below, you're going to see a link to the website. There's a step-by-step -step there that's a picture step-by-step. -step. There's gridding information. There's extra help so you can really succeed at this painting. I have Mars Black, Thalo Green, Ultramarine Blue, Thalo Blue, Cad Yellow Medium, Quinacridone Magenta, Alizarin Crimson. I have Yellow Ochre, Burnt Sienna, Titanium White, and Zinc White. Now, I realize between these two colors, it may seem crazy to you that I can tell the difference. But I promise you, if you've been painting a little while, eventually you'll start to see how there's a red tone to ultramarine and a green tone to thalo blue. Same between the two whites. It actually does get easier. If you're struggling to tell the difference, it is okay to label. There's nothing wrong with that because it takes a little while to learn it. I'm going to start out kind of working again on my little background flowers for a minute just to jump back into the painting. Sometimes it's nice to get into something with those little soft elements to get warmed up. It's like warming up before an aerobics class, but without the sweating and the misery and the crying. All right, I'm going to dip my number six Cambridge in some water, dragging off the extra. I'm going to get a little of my zinc. I'm going to add just a smidge, smidge, smidge of my ultramarine blue to it at this stage, and I'm going to hit another little layer here. The wonderful thing about zinc over titanium is very transparent. Um, landscape painters will often talk about how they love that transparency because when you play it against titanium white, you can get some amazing dramatic effects that are very similar to nature. Now you're going to notice that I'm making like little kind of random brush strokes. Can you see how they just wiggle around? I'm trying to break up patterns here. So that things appear more natural to my eye. I mean, this is an illusion after all, but there's little things that we can do. Little bit of ultramarine blue to make sure that our paintings have that slightly more 
natural feel. But, uh, it actually is fun for me, strangely enough. We're going to be doing this all the way through across here, this next layer. Um, John, if we have any questions or anything to say to anyone, we can do that probably as we come through here and we just do our little wiggling stroke. Yeah, I will check that out. I was just over here making sure our cameras are all lined up. That's always like good. The, it helps that the cameras are lined up. I know that our gnomes were a little slow today, but they got out. Looks like they're all, everyone's getting the gnomes right now. Gnomes always escape. Just so that everyone knows, we call the notifications that we send out through SMS, gnomifications. And no, SMS means texting. Text messages. So. <laughs> Just in case, because that could be something you wouldn't know. Yeah, no, I totally get it. That's it's why not we're like trying a universal to explain. knowledge, right? Yeah. So if you're in the United States and you'd like to get a text message delivered by a gnome, um, go to our website. You can check out how to get that. There's a link. There's a little information there, and that number changes periodically. So we like to refer you to the website to go get that. But there's information there how to sign up for the text notification. That's always a good thing to be able to do. Know when there's going to be a live. That's going to be super important this April. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> ah, I'm just looking oh. forward to that so much. Now, there were lots of questions uh, that are carrying over from yesterday about okay. the whites that you can use here. Yes. So, uh, milky white. Is that the same as zinc white? Um, I would have to look at a particular pigment-based database that's uh, for... Um, universities and stuff to see i don't know that one right off the top of my head so but what you're looking for without seeing your product and checking if it's one of the vanity names for zinc white or titanium white or bone white or china white or lead white um because it could be any of those there's many 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 whites um what i'm going to say you're looking for is a transparent white that doesn't tint or functionally change the color of your paint. So how to test that is mix it into your cadmium red. If it makes a crazy little orange color, it's too tinting. But if it just lightens the cadmium red but leaves it its basic color, it's perfect. You know what I forgot this time? What'd you forget? Towel. Oh. Something that's always for... something, right? Always, you know uh, you're here. Look, I got one right here. Right. Oh, fantastic. Oh, go so that's just something to look at. Like anytime you see an artist doing something, um, what you're looking for is the effect of the product, right? And oftentimes acrylic paint makers, out paint makers in general, they'll have lots of really fun names for their products and they can be completely unrelated almost to what the product does. Um, I often like to say tar gel is nothing like tar. I don't, I don't know why it was called tar gel. It's, I think it's been renamed, oh, but it, it was, was just a long rheology thick. gel that did strings. It was very thick. It was tarry kind of like. Yeah, but it's supposed to do a string effect. Well, yeah, Which that it, was yeah, it was a whole thing. So sometimes, agreed. sometimes it's obscure, and it's you know it's good to know that so you can be prepared for that. I'm gonna move the pink down here a little bit around the hands. I'm gonna basically just get my titanium white and my quinacridone together, and I'm gonna come down here. I want the sky to come down a bit. See what I'm doing? Yeah. I might pull it up into the hair, but I definitely want the sky to come down a bit into the flowers here because it's going to give nice contrast between the hands. It's something I did before, and you can always do that. You can always come through, and any color you have, you can always put back into some little element of your sky. See how I'm just making sure it feels integrated? Yeah. Yeah, you can always, always do that. You can always come back and play with yellows you can always find little highlights in your sky you're never ever stuck now the next thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to get a little smidge oh my goodness such a smidge of my yellow and the yellow is very tinting the cad yellow is very tinting so it's really hard for me to get just the small amount that i need i'm going to come here and in the center because we have the light here i'm going to go ahead and take advantage of that story and warm up or light the space between the girls with this yellow and zinc white, making little dashing soft strokes. I'm not pressing hard. You know, I'm taking advantage of the Cambridge, which is a very scruffly little brush. It's so weird. I had no idea I loved scruffly little brushes until like this last like year and a half when I discovered that 
that this is really one of my favorite tools on the planet. <laughs> Just in general. Mm. You're always learning new things about yourself in relationship to your art. You can put a little bit over here if you want and kind of imply that this is pulled in around the girls. Fun, fun, fun. Another fun thing you can do is you can take a little of your um, ochre. Boom, boom, boom. Get a smidge, smidge of your green. And you're going to make this sort of bright, bright green. It needs to be green enough that you notice that it's green. And let's put in some, some little bits of green here and there. Kind of like making sure that there's, these are going to pop through, right? Little bits of green here and there. It never hurts to have a little green. It's not easy being green. Always George of the Jungle. And we're going to come back with some more white. But this is going to get this nice, soft, out of focus background in, which is one of the wonderful things about this piece. Where I'm coming to the outer edge, you know, I might darken the green with a little burnt sienna. Look how I bring that over there. I'll just make sure that there's some of this sort of peeking through. While I let that dry, I'm going to do something kind of wild. I'm going to get a little of my titanium white. And again, that smidge of yellow. I don't want it to be pure white. And you'll notice that when you add the titanium to this space, it just creates this more focused edge. When these two play against each other, it is pretty magical. And this is a good space to like learn about how those two paints interact. Isn't it? Yeah. Just pulling this down. Now you have that kind of much more pop focused little white there. I can come back into my zinc and just make sure that these little pops of green are blended in. See how these layers are happening? Middle grays. Then we get the highlights in and stuff starts to go on. The highlights are an important part of this. Just lovely. Now, I'm going to have some fun and I'm going to put in some value work on our girl on the right. I'm going to take a little bit of my black and I'm going to work it into my yellow ochre. And this is going to be a deep, dark shadow color. Plan, so I'm still working with you guys. We're going to make kind of like a little V here. So when we're painting hair, a little darker, we actually don't paint each individual hair necessarily. Very often what we paint is shape and shadow. So it's very important to get the shadow and the values of your hair, the darker values worked out, so that when you go to add the highlights and the middle tones, it'll be like the hair gets revealed out of the blue. It's so fun. And you can just look at the painting and look at the reference and be like, where do I, where do I have some, some dark colors working there? Be some space for that. And then here at the back of the head, we definitely, definitely want to make sure that we have put this little shadow in. I'm going to pull this out where the hair is going to come over. Now, I'm going to take my yellow ochre and a lot less of the black. It's still in there. I'm going to start giving my middle tones some space and pulling in some of those shapes. 
Not too detailed because I've still got to do her jeans and stuff. But this is just a nice stage. We're not doing the highlights yet. We're just starting to grab those middle values and those shadows. But already I imagine you can see that it makes a huge difference. Doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Then we'll come up here. Oh, excellent. Getting that going is so much fun. Now, I like to do, I'm going to do on the jacket, I'm going to do a little bit of the black. And I'm going to do my white here. And I'm going to work my values from that. My darkest values will definitely, 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 definitely be under the hair because that might have a little bit of shadow. So even though this jacket is quite light, and we're going to be talking about a light jacket, you might have some deep shadows on that jacket, right? Yeah. Come right here and just, you know, under the, under the arm there, there might be one. Oh, wiggling back and forth, covering up, getting our values worked out. As we start to tell the story of shape and light. Come up to the shoulder. You can see I'm just really working that little brush. Hopefully you're working your little brush. Even though this arm is going to be going off, off the canvas, we still want to know things about it. It still needs to have shape, right? So we need to put a highlight and a shadow there. I'm going to soften it. I love being able to soften things. Always good. And so we're going to just keep working our highlights. You know, where could we have a lighter value? But still leaving room. <coughs> For our lightest value, right? Yeah. And come here, maybe I'll leave a little strip of the dark. And you can wiggle the edges to soften this. See how we're doing? Yeah. This is a nice way to soften this little space where the lines aren't so hard. Come up to the shoulder. I always like to mess with the wrinkles and elements of shirt. Fabric is interesting to paint. Except when it was the silky and then it was like, ah, challenge. <laughs> hmm. I'm going to get another little highlight going here. You can see as we start to get those values, that's where the painting starts to happen. If you're very, very new to painting, some of these techniques might be a little challenging at first, but all of them are super learnable with practice. I'm going to go ahead and get a whole nother layer of like white onto here into that gray. Isn't that fun? I'm going to come here and I'm going to pull some light. Right to there. Let's get some up here on the shoulder. Fun to highlight the little bumps of the fabric. There we go. So how do you how do you keep your palette so moist all the time? I don't. I don't. It's a struggle. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah. Um, I can use a mister. I don't have one out now. One, one of my techniques would be to get a mister. I'm getting my pure white. And um, try to mist it to keep the paint from drying out. You can put humidifiers next to it to try to keep it going. You can use a wet palette. I'm just making sure that our sunlight is catching some stuff here. Yeah. Now I 
going to get into my gray. Grab some of my zinc. Just want to make sure. One trick is you can put a little of your ultramarine into that. It kind of blues it. Just make sure that things are soft back here. See how we're doing? Just softly blending. We're still seeing those little value transitions. If you lose any, you can always put them back. Easy peasy to do. Now, while that's having a little rest, we're going to come in and we're going to work the shirt, which is basically our blue, a little bit of black, and our white. So let's come here and go under the jacket with this dark value a little bit. Bring this out here. I think it's fun to wiggle the shirt a bit. And then as I'm going to go, I'm going to get lighter and lighter, much lighter. Just working my little fabric. You can keep that sort of a little shadow there. And then a lot lighter. I can fling my little brush out and see I can make these little wiggles, which sort of imply some of the shape of this. Just a little highlight. A little highlight on the shirt. You can always come back and get a little bit of my black. I do mix it into my blue, but I make this sort of much more noticeable gray. You can add some wrinkles into the shirt. See, with the shadow. This shirt would have some wrinkles. It's very loose and soft at this stage. We have to come back through actually with a different brush to harden it up. But this brush does a good job of letting us into the piece where we want to be. Gonna add a brighter highlight right here. And bring that back a bit. The jeans are kind of fun. I'm gonna just come here and start working this. And I think it's important to like you want to work through your three values. So you want to get your shadows, your middle tones, and your highlights. And for her denim, I actually started with my phthalo blue and I add a little bit of my burnt sienna into it to gray it just a tip. So when you come here, remember that there's a little bit of a shadow here because the foot's kicking back. All right, we're going to come here and we're going to just make sure that our pants. the shape of our legs. There, like that. And then you just start working like your dif different little value shades of your denim. I to work denim. Look at that. We're going to come here on the outside edge. And see, this is where I can kind of increase the size of the pants. Come across here and highlight this. Get a nice little highlight going there. And you can see I'm just very lightly. Look how lightly I'm working this brush and letting the pigment just sort of softly come off onto the canvas. One of the reasons that oil painters as a community as a whole really like to mix on a glass palette with a palette knife is they don't like unexpected pops of color. Not every single oil artist in the universe, just in general as a community, as a rule. Bring some fabric down here. Because as you're painting and you do these loosely mixed mixes, 
little bits of unexpected color will get in. Like you might have a dark little spot of blue that comes in and you've got to know how to recognize, oh, I'm getting some dark colors and how you might want to move that to where a shadow is, if that makes sense. It does. I've been quietly drinking coffee. Have you? Yes. Have they been quietly painting? Uh, no, they, yeah, we've been chatting back and forth in shadow here, kind of catching up with everyone. I'm going to very softly brush over this, just to soften that value. A little bit of my burnt sienna into my blue. It's always just fun to softly find that space. You're going to have to, like, get your high lines in soon enough, so you might as well enjoy getting that denim feel, that soft, soft shape, that soft space that's going on. That's an interesting question. I have an interesting answer. And and the reason why I find it interesting because or maybe it's not, I don't. Who knows? Let's find out. <laughs> yeah, this is this is sort of not intuitive. So, hmm. Gracie was asking, can you use like a a makeup brush to blend color? Okay, so I've been actually looking at this. My only issue with the makeup brushes uh, for painting is that sometimes they're too soft or they're not designed to, to take the levels of water we're looking for. But outside of that, I don't really see a problem with it. But that, if, that's if you, the interesting thing is, is that you would think that you would want a soft brush for blending when you actually kind of need well, a You stipple. can because a lot of people use a goat hair um, blender. Oh, yeah, that's true. Right. So that might actually, you know, if that's, if that's what you're trying to get to, that could be. Just very softly. But there are, they tend not to hold the right amount of water. That's really what it is. And so um, I'm actually going to look into that a little bit to see if I can give more pertinent advice to it. But nothing bad is going to happen. Just some of the tools <laughs> you try will maybe not work it's, as well. Yes. You can paint with sticks. Right. It's possible. Well, Just, and, 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 and this might be more effective than, say, a stick. Yes. Um, well, it depends on what kind, whether you want <laughs> sticky marks. Right. Well, exactly. <laughs> it's all about the mark you want to make. Notice how softly I'm brushing over here. This is very much a dry brush, isn't it? Yeah. That's a lot of how I get my little denim feel. Just making sure that I've got this soft, soft. And this could be challenging. This might be, this might be the harder part of this for you, right? And yeah. if it is, what I would say to you, painter that you are out there in the world practice the technique there's nothing nothing out there in art and a technique that you cannot learn if you just put a little little time practicing into it amazing what you can pick up but it can be real challenging on the canvas to do something new not be sure how it's going to work out you know and then feel like, oh, I'm just totally failing, when really you just need to, just need to give yourself a little extra time. I have little, little sort of like these uh, more hard lines that happen here, but I like to get a bunch of stuff done. Mm -hmm. before I start that. And right now I'm going to dip in the water. Sometimes when you're doing a dry brush, you will find that at, so at some point, like you're... Brush stops working as a brush. <laughs> and you start yeah, going, clean what's it up happening and then here? I'm going to wipe that out a little bit. I really enjoy painting that part. Denim is one of my favorite things to paint. We don't paint the foot. We don't paint any of that perspective. It's all under the daisies. This is just really as far as we have to get any of the stuff that we're doing. 
I'm going to get back into my zinc and I'm going to grab just a smidge of my blue. I'm going to come here and start trying to work this undershirt back. Little trick about zinc is you can lighten things very easily with it. Okay. Now, they were if asking you you if the, on the Cambridge there. Yes. Does one of them stand out to you like one that you would like, like better than the other? Like of the were, Cambridges? Yeah. Which one would you like if you just had one to go get? Like what would be the first one you'd grab? A bright. The bright? A bright. I would get a bright first. I really use the brights and the round. I don't use the other brushes in the line, not because there's anything wrong with them. It's just that's what's useful to me. Um, for acrylic April, I'm going to be using um, a number eight. I would say for 11 by 14s and smaller canvases, a line share between an eight and a six. Gotcha. Would be my predominant color that I would be likely to use. That's like, if you only could take one tube of paint to an island, what tube would it be? Hawaiian gold gesso. <laughs> I, I was going to be the one that has a cell phone in it. <laughs> <laughs> well, they need to start doing that, don't they? <laughs> Putting cell phones in the paint. Goodness gracious. They do, they do. Why are we being trapped on a desert island with just one tube of paint? Was I my don't first know. You came up with a game. I, I have no idea why this is a game. It was it was a game that was posted to me. I oh, okay. Like, I, was like, I was just like, I don't well, want to go to this island. I want right. to go to the island that like leaves me a bunch of paint. <laughs> I want to be left on the island. How about island. Hawaii? They have art stores. <laughs> yeah. Can, can they leave me on the island with the island art store? Yeah. This, yeah. It's magically populated with newest, With all the supplies art. that I need? Yeah. Come on, dudes. That's the, that's the one we're going to I'm going to rinse out here, and let's pop a little highlight on our shirt. We're going to get her just white. Let's come right here on the outside edge and hit a little highlight. Maybe one right here on that wrinkle of the shirt. There we go. Okay. Now what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to grab my detail brush, interestingly enough, which is my number one round. And I'm going to take, I might need a mister. It's really dry in here today. I think it's because we have the heater on. Yes, it is a little warmer today. I'm taking my burnt sienna to my phthalo blue. Now, yes, using a palette knife there to mix that color, much easier than messing around with a teeny tiny little brush. But why do that? I'm going to come right here and make a little line across. I'm going to talk about somewhat about that little belt loop. Oh, the denim part. Yeah, a little bit of stitching, right? A little bit of stitching we're going to talk about. A little bit of stitching. Talk about a little pocket. Sometimes jeans have pockets, don't they? A little pocket suggestion. Wrinkles in the pants. I don't know. When I was like ten, none of my jeans had pockets left. Well, that was a, that was an aggressive wrinkle in the pants. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my Cambridge and kind of rock that back. <laughs> that was just really aggressive wrinkle. It just these are some wrinkly, wrinkly jeans. It's just yeah, it was a little more aggressive than I meant it to be. They need to be self de-wrinkling jeans because kids wear them. Yeah, kids yeah. wear their pants, so you can't. Uh, Ask a kid to keep their wear wool pants. pants. Yeah. Okay, All the Boy Scouts just said, but I like wool socks. <laughs> well, I'm sure they do. Nothing wrong with them, right? Not once you get used to them. Keep going here. We're going to come right underneath here. Make sure that that shadow is defined. Under here, finding that wiggle shadow. Now, it's a good time to put out your fluid white. Um, if John gets a chance to grab me the mister, that would be good. Sure. Awesome. But I can also just put out more paint. I'm very, very blessed in my paint reality. The mist. Right. 
I'll get them later. Honey bunny. Honey bunny. So, in case you didn't notice, we're live. Coffee. You know. <laughs> this, this, we, spider sometimes episode. spiders attack us. Sometimes my husband squirts me in the face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to grab some of my denim color and add I, a lot of white to it. I didn't think you were that close to the... To the uh, it's okay. I need to, maybe you were saying, you need to wake up now, girl. <laughs> wake up. Wake up. <laughs> I'm going to add a highlight to the top of some of these little shadow lines. It's kind of like an off blue inside my pockets, maybe. Ooh. Speaking of islands with art stores, uh-huh. uh, Jeannie from uh, Maui is saying hello. <gasps> do they have good art store? I bet they do. Well, they have art store and good weather on island, so I Artists mean, what else do you... I don't know. I'm so jealous. Maui, Tahiti, the, it's a magical place, as Agent Coulson would say. So this is like kind of a light blue that you're getting. I am powered by coffee. Sherpas powered by Tiggers are powered by other things and Sherpas are powered by coffee. My favorite. Okay. So when I have my jeans in and I'm happy with those lines and everything that I have there, then I can come here with my white. And you're going to want to take the outline just a little bit of this. Just to find the whimsy in that shirt. Right? Yeah. Because kids are whimsical. Enjoy the whimsy. And the mimsy. And the more groves out, Grabe. Now, using, taking advantage of my squirter bottle, I'll just add some water to my phthalo blue. Huh. Therefore, not having to thin my paint by one little drop at a time. Just use that nice ample amount. And I'm going to just come here and I'm going to define this little band. I'm going to come under, talk a little bit about that shadow, and then let's make little patterns. See these? These little flowers. Little dashes. Do every one. You can do every one if you want to. If you would like to paint every little bit of flower, guess what? In art, you can. If you're painting, go for it. You can do whatever you'd like to do to enjoy your result. And you should. Because at the end of the day, the purpose of the painting is about your experience through the process. Why were you using fluid white? Because it really helps the flow off my brush. Really, really does. You can thin your heavy body white down. See if you can get a nice little flow, and sometimes you can. But I love the pigment load of the fluid paints because they're really, really, really loaded. And they're so, they're so rich, but yet flow off my brush. So if I thin a heavy body paint down, I don't really quite have the pigment that I get from the fluid paint. Art companies actually really don't innovate that much. And what I mean by that is, is that they're not just like experimenting in a lab, like in the Willy Wonka factory, trying to think of new art products. Basically what happens is they have an art friend who comes over and complains about some art related problem a whole bunch. It's true. And then they try to resolve that issue. It's it's. It, I would say it's accurate to say that most art materials are designed responsively. Yes, they're, they're not. They're not research, developed, and anticipating a need from the market. And it, the art industry is a tough one to do that in because there's been a lot of companies who've tried to put out product that they they would think uh, is good for it. And I know there's there's a lot more of that in. Um, some of the watercolor market than there is mm -hmm. here, but you know the. Uh, but again, that's still responsive generally to an artist, you know, weighing in. But it's it's very hard to anticipate 
the needs and wants of the art industry because it's so subjective to you know the people and you know that are that are doing and making it up i'm gonna add a little bit of a highlight in the band here nice oh i think that's pretty lovely yeah nice good times good times guess what we get to do now what you gonna do well while i'm messing around i might as well get a little bit of my green and my brown green and brown green and brown green and brown and I'm going to come across here, and I'm going to make a little sort of wandering stroke of vine. And it's going to curve, curve that little brush stroke around. I do have flowers and things that are going to be there. Absolutely do. But I need to let that base get in. I'm going to size down on my brush, which is why you have a number two Cambridge listed. Because you can see that's going to give me lots and lots of room within the hair. I'm going to change out my water to clean water at this stage. You have multiple waters. Yes, I have multiple waters. I'm going to take a little of my black over to my yellow ochre. Now I'm going to start playing with stuff. I might even get a little burnt sienna in this time, warm it up. We're going to start. Lumped up little brush. We're going to start finding little spaces in the hair to work with. Let's have a little tendril happen down there. See how we use the brush and these S strokes to create hair shapes? So now, now finally, we are talking about. Look how the brush just actually does such a good job of implying hair. I love its scruffly little self. It's so, it's so helpful. You'll see me make a little highlight right there. Leaving the shadows underneath. A little bit of little bit of black to gray it. And we're just gonna have to work this through the whole head. The hair, I think, for me, is just one of the funner things to do. I love doing things like a curl. I enjoy it very, very much. Maybe I take some of my hair here. See how that comes across that shadow, creating those layers. Real easy to get caught in what you think. Let's pull some down here. See how, again, everything's in a curve though. I'm going to rinse out often so that my brush doesn't glob up too much. So I'll pull out the yellow ochre and I'll get a little of the black in there. This is really kind of our quick way to get into a sort of an ash blonde. Let's come up here and make a little highlight on this hair. Right here. Here, maybe coming like that through here. Lovely. What we're doing, we're just painting a bunch of lovely, lovely hair. When I have that, I'm going to rinse out often again because the paint is drying on my brush. It's my palette because the paint is drying on my palette. <laughs> Again, smidge of black. What you're really doing is you're just graying the ochre. You don't want it to be super dark. You just do want to gray it. And I'm going to get a little of my zinc. And we like zinc because it lightens without changing the hue. Now I'm going to start coming here. A little highlight. You like a little highlight? I do. I'll put 
one right here. Coming around here. This is even going to imply like a little part. It's sort of fun. If you lose any of your shadow that you need to put back, it's real easy to put back on the crown. Don't, don't get panicky. Just get calm and focused. Highlight there. Highlight some hair here. Isn't it amazing how as the highlights happen, the hair happens? Yeah, it really it's is. Shocking. Oh, a highlight really starts to tell you all about the hair. And I haven't even gotten into the power moves yet. <laughs> power moves? Yeah, the power moves of my hair. Oh, it's starting to flow, isn't it? Hey, do these power moves emanate from the 80s? <laughs> I think that. I mean, everything on moves. me emanates from the 80s in some way, I hate to admit. <laughs> Somewhere between the 80s and 90s. I'm actually really shocked at how much I relate to the Goldbergs. <laughs> 1980-something. Yes, somewhere between 1980-something and 19... And I've owned so many of those outfits. I think the only thing I haven't had is all Beverly shirts, but I've certainly, like, embellished some stuff. Did I bedazzle? I hand-painted and bedazzled a thing or two. There we go. Nothing in our home was safe from being rhinestoned. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Your home was like, it will be done. All right. Getting my little dark value back because I think? think I need a little bit here and I'll just. I think there was nothing in my kitchen that didn't, wasn't toll paint. Really? Yeah. I seem to remember a lot of cherubs in your house. Yeah, well, you know, it was all that you know, the little uh, they make the little floweries and the little uh, there yeah, were a lot of cherubs. But most of like the kitchen stuff, she had done all herself. All your mom's on. super, super creative. She's like, she's like, I'm gonna bake this bread in a terracotta pot, and it'd be like a muffin, but a flower. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> like, never, never really had to relate to it. It's like it looks yummy, but it's in a terracotta pot. That's too pretty to eat. Those people. That's okay. Because during that time that she was those people making food that was too pretty to eat, I glittered everything and all my mail. Mm. That was me and that was terrible. I know. So I've added a little bit of my cad yellow to my yellow ochre. And I'm going to get into my white here. I'm going to start making my super, super blonde highlight. Put this right here between the two sides of hair and make it shiny. Come out here to this outer edge. I'm going to pick this highlight here. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Look at that highlight happen. Remember I told you? Painting and be crazy until you get to those when until you get those three values in, and then all of a sudden you're like, where'd that painting come from? That's funny. You can see that by adding the little highlight sequentially, I've twisted the hair. And that can be an overwhelming thing. Like, how do I twist the hair? How do, how do I do those curls? Inquiring Sherpets want to know. Yellow ochre. The only thing is avoid it from going too pad. What? Don't let it get too too cad yellow to look oh, like she, she got in the I thought you pool. said plaid. I was like, are are we gonna hit a hyperspace speed or something? No, <laughs> I mean that could happen, but uh <laughs> Sorry, it's just like <laughs> Spaceballs was playing in my head. When is Spaceballs not playing in our heads, right? It's a you know, function of you know pop culture indoctrination I don't love space balls who doesn't love the space balls so what do i have now i have my detail one where's my detail round here you are let's get some white in you and come over to this get some details i'm gonna load up i'm gonna work over here i'm gonna turn it to the side 
So I have one strong kind of direction that I work. And I take these little light hairs, as you can see. Some of them can be more yellow, which is why it's nice to work into that space if you need to. And some of them will be more light as you go. And just fly out a few of them here and there. Uh, do you think there'll be there'll be a need for a part two on this? Nope. Or I mean a part three? Nope. We're gonna finish today. I'm feeling energetic unless they want a part three, which is fine. Whatever they well, feel. I think they were just like curious. And it was like, you think you're gonna go all the way through or do you I think, think I you're am. gonna do part three? I think I'm going to be cheeky and go all the way through. But if you guys are like, oh my gosh, I'm so tired. You have to stop. Sure. Of course I will. I won't be mean and be like, no, you find your way. We're only 51 minutes into this. Yeah, I think we've got about 40 more minutes in it and we'll be done. Yeah. Yeah. And that's reasonable. But you can see we're doing three power hours is just a lot for people. Really enjoy this curve around. I think this is one of my fun ones. Yeah, we do. Enjoy it. Play with it. We don't paint every little hair, but we paint some of the little hairs. Some of the little hair. She's spectacular, isn't she? Yeah, I like the how that shirt turned out. It's really sharp. Just fun to do this. And when you hit those highlights and when you play with that space, you're going to find, you can even do it here if you want to. You can pull out a little hair here. Just enjoy. Now, once I have that in, I get to you the fun, fun, fun part. So the first part of the fun, fun, fun part is I'm going to take a little of my cad and my yellow ochre. And I'm going to just get some... Little spot. You, just, you, 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 I, I keep, you keep faking me out. You like turn around to look and then you don't get any paint. You turn really? around to look and you don't get I any don't paint. know I'm even doing that when I do it. I so apologize to everybody. Ha, I got you that time. So, <laughs> Well, I mean, after squirting me, anything that happens to you, you kind of basically deserve, right? You're trying to mess with me. So I put those little yellow dots in. I'm going to take, I'm going to miss my palette because it's dry as I'll get out in here. We have to put out more ultramarine. Mm, coffee time. Coffee time. I grab a little bit of my yellow and some of my green. I'm going to make a very, very bright green. You can even add a little of your white to it to improve the flow. But I will just create some highlight, but some little vines. They just happen real fast. Rinse it out. I find my detail brushes are the hardest to rinse. Grab what's left of my, my ultramarine. I'm going to load it all into my white. I'm going to make a soft kind of off-white blue. I'm going to load it heavily onto my brush. I'm going to make a bunch of little petal marks. These are not my final petals. What this is, is these are going to be the little shadows that pop my final petal. Like, these are like the little petals that would be here underneath, all shadowy. Creates a nice, like, three-dimensionality. 
really makes these little headbands feel super like full and well addressed. How's everybody doing? Really good. Are you guys doing good? Yes. Now I'm going to take a little bit of my just pure yellow on the brush. If I can thin it with some water, I will, but I just want my pure yellow. Am I coming at it? Just some spots. See those little daisies. So there's like that pop. You can even hide a little bit of yellow in one of the one of the things. And now carefully with just your pure white paint, create your focal daisy. Oh, the focal daisy. That's right. These are the daisies that we're clearly seeing. Not every daisy, not every petal. And now you can see, especially as you're painting this, how... Cool petals really help the white petals pop. Way back. Little daisies on her head. This one is facing down, so the petals will be right there. Sometimes they face down. Cheeky little daisies. They're shortened. And I just wherever I have that cool blue, I'm going to put a little highlight white. All right. You got to admit, we're doing pretty good. Is there any way I can trouble you for a palette knife, John? Sure. You have a whole, you I mean, like, did you know? <laughs> That you make your own line of palette knives, and we have a. Whole I have heard that I make my own line of palette knives. I'm. I don't really hawk my products. Not because I'm not proud of it. I am super, super proud you're of all it. Dirty. But you're gonna see me painting with it, and so you'll work it out yourself. So I don't ever worry about it. They're all everywhere that, you know, art materials are basically sold. I'm gonna make my skin tone. Now. My first skin tone is going to be based on alizarin crimson and yellow ochre. I'll have to put up some more yellow ochre. And the second one is going to be based on yellow ochre, a little bit of cad yellow, and the quinacridone. And that is oh. going to have is how I'm going to get the little skin values in real fast and have enough. To do all the little micro adjustments that skin, skin tones require, which is like a total pain. In the description below, if skin tones are your nemesis and you just find them upsetting, I have one of my very favorite books. Um, I feel like I brought that book back into popularity, but it's really amazing uh, how to make skin tones and there's like 400 recipes. And once you really start looking at them, and yes, there are that many skin tones. It's why sometimes when you, you know, talk to artists and they just are not getting this, like, kind of issue between, like, skin colors. They're like, there's 400. I can't keep track. Because <laughs> we just live in a different space where you're more like, what's that color mixture again? So I'm, I'm doing the quinacridone on this one, the yellow ochre. Okay. A smidge of the cad yellow. And so at first glance, these look almost the same, but they are not. And that'll become super evident when we start lightening them because one will have this very bright pink and one will be very deep. And it's really a lot of fun to do. So I've got both of those colors fairly worked out and well incorporated. I'm going to get back into my small number two. And I'm going to start working this out here on her shoulder. Now, I started with some very dark skin values um, yesterday. And I do want to have a deeper skin tone on her. 
So sometimes I might get a little of my burnt sienna in there. But basically, I'm going to take a little of my white. And you can see, boom, skin tone. All right? There she is. So there's this. This is going to be a highlight. I get the shadows, believe it or not, by adding ultramarine blue to her base mix. See how that works? Yes. That gives me a nice shadow. So if I come here and I'm like, oh, there's a little bit of a shadow, I can start getting that in pretty easily. I'm going to just make sure that I'm going to wipe that, off my brush so I don't have too much, and I'm going to get my next value up. It's done. There's a good question that okay. uh, easier for you to address than it is for me to try to type an answer for. Okay. <laughs> so, so then I'll just say the words and prevent your typing. When painting a tutorial and yeah. someone comes along and says, hey, I want to buy that from you, is it ethical to sign your name on that? Okay, so here, here's the deal. Because um, what you're actually technically doing here on a lesson is you're doing a reproduction. And as a teacher, I have some use policy that you can read in the description below that actually does allow you to sell in very specific ways. Um, so definitely check the use policy because you wouldn't want to sell in one of those non-specific ways. Um, and here's what it is. I am perfectly fine with you signing your name on it, right? Here, when it becomes an issue is when you paint somebody famous. If you sign their name, that's forgery and that's a crime. When you sign your name and you're just honest and you say, hey, this is a replica of a painting or this is a tutorial, you are absolutely ethically clear and legally clear in your art space as long as the artist's use policy allows you to sell the tutorials. We have a friend, Daniel Elliott, and he does not allow people to sell his tutorials. But, and that's because his, each of his works is a fine art creation that he's not trying to teach people how to do his fine art. He's, 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 he's a showing work, you a technique. Right. He's a working fine artist. Yeah. So it's a little different with him. And me as an art and, teacher. And you as an art teacher. Yeah. And, and I'm kind of, sometimes, you know, I'm a little unique. You can see I'm just lightning, lightning here. See how we go? It's really not that bad, is it? Not that bad at all. I'm going to come here and do a similar thing. I got my dark value. And I'm going to work my paddle at first. There it is. When I say paddle, it's the basic shape of the hand. And I'm going to come up the arm. I know I've got a lot, and I mean a lot. Of hair coming down that's going to cover this, but I do want to make sure that it is covering it by going over. At the hands, I'm going to have to get into my detail brush. But until then, I should be able to work this space. With that. So, yeah, just don't, um, you don't want to commit any kind of a crime. <laughs> don't commit a crime. <laughs> don't do it. So, what it is in art is you just want to be honest about process. You wouldn't want to go on Pinterest. Repaint a painting that you just saw there and then say this is inspired by Pinterest. Would not want to do that. That's, <laughs> Except yeah. for your personal learning journey. <laughs> right? Because all that stuff on Pinterest belongs to somebody. Right. That's, like that's, it belongs to Daniel. It's, and that's a tough thing that just because it's on the internet doesn't mean it's free. Yeah. You got to go to specific websites for that. <laughs> that's always the case. It is always the case, but sometimes people don't know. And, and to that end, you know, don't get mad because an artist doesn't know something. It takes a minute to learn it. I'm going to come here and turn to the side. This is the hardest one of the ones to do, and I'm going to have to get into, again, my um, more detailed brush. But I want to get this part sort of shaded out before I get into the crazy biz that is the hand. 
Now, while I have this, I've got to do her hand or at least a good portion of it. But hey, no problem because over here I have the base skin tone. I'm going to add even a little more pink to it. Let's get a little white into that. See how much bigger that is? Yes. Yeah. Do, 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 do. There's a bunch of little highlights and things that happen over in the hand. That being said, I'm going to get my ultramarine. And you can see it also cools this over here. Crazy, right? Yeah. Put that skin tone in shadow. Here. I know I can adjust these things and get my detail brushes out and really work these little shapes, but getting some of this in in value in the first place is really nice. Very helpful. And already, you're seeing that this has got some nice value. Now, the next thing that I'll do is I'm going to get into my number two bright, and I'm going to use my number one round. Because what I can do is I can come in and, and very easily with my number two bright, work out some important value transitions that I need to have. and add fluidity and and also it helps to put on my now drop vision enhancers which i just totally undermined <laughs> by smearing them uh, oh that man. would not enhance much vision would it oh they're your vision <laughs> in the smudgers so i'm going to come here and i'm going to make sure that i make a nice wrist line let me go over to the camera so what i'm trying to do is make a sharp and noticeable bed Right. You can even take this minute and you can come up here. And I might want it even darker. Right. I'm going to come under this. Maybe under the arm. Just to make sure that I've got a nice little shadow line. And that a little bit of shape, a little bit of thought. I'd work that over there. So we've got our base skin tone plus a little pink. Where I want to have the shadow, I'm going to add a little bit of a blue. There we go. And a shadow under the sleeve. I definitely have to make room for the thumb, which is going to be coming out. <clears throat> now, the rest of this is quite light. So let's get a little of this here. We get the, we get the value that we like. I'm going to turn this canvas again. I know it's weird, but always work to your comfort. Right? You want to always work to your space that's comfortable. And I'm going to imply a little bit of this that's coming forward. You can, when you have your skin tones out like this, look, you can mix those half spaces, can't you? Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. Detail brush, go! <laughs> I'm going to start with my darkest shadow color. Go Sherpa detail brush. <laughs> I'm going to come here, make a pin on a joint, and work the thumb. <laughs> That thumb. She also has a couple fingers that we can kind of see peeking out. The finger. Does this fiddly business matter? I think it does, actually. Which is why I bothered with 
I don't think it matters. It's cool. Okay. And I have that there. I'm going to come into her kind of dark value that I've got. Do I have any of that worked out? It's thin enough to come off my... So hers has a bit of a bump right there. And it's going to come out a little bit straight past this thumb. And then there's these knuckles that bump. Or finger bump, bump, bump. Now, blue, skin tone, super dark. First layer. So it's like a shadow, isn't it? Like a cool gray. And come under here. And where the palm is, you imply a shadow. And I can also imply one to the finger. I like to get a little bit of that going. Now I've got my base skin tone. I'm going to get my white in here. In the hands, you can always get a little extra of your red involved. It's interesting. Because hands, noses, and ears tend to have more red showing through. So I can come here and you know, come in and maybe make a little bit of a thumb. A little highlight. Highlight the knuckles. They cut a little bit of sunlight. You take her base skin tone and a little bit more red. Too much more red. <laughs> we are getting requests for international gnome clearance. We've got to work on our international SMS program. I agree. It's coming. Uh, just so you know, the team has it in queue. They're working on it. There's lots of hammering and nailing and cobbling, I sawing noises coming from the web development area. I know they're building things. So once you have the hand, and the hand's going to be a struggle. If you, and I'm not trying to like put like bad juju in your space. I'm just saying the hand is more of a struggle than other elements of the painting. Because there's little bits that are showing, and you have to make it believable that those little bits are what they are. So you may find that you've got to do some adjustments there to make that work. Across that wrist. I mean, it's fun for me. I'm like, Little shadows. I love putting those little things everywhere. I think we've got that. We can get into our denim, guys. Denim, denim. Okay, cool. A little excited about denim. Yeah. And then get into my number six. Amanda was asking, are these girls going to the Renaissance Festival? And I was like, Coachella. I don't know. But, <laughs> but you certainly could dance if you want to. You can leave your friends behind. Well, they're not going to leave their friends behind. They're definitely not. Gonna well, your friends don't friends. dance, and if they don't dance, well, they're gonna. Of course, they're gonna dance. Why wouldn't they dance? Well, they're no friends of mine. Well, they wouldn't be my friends if they don't dance. Marriage. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna come back in and talk a little bit more about my denim shadow, where I know I'm gonna be adding some hair. All right. So our denim over here is the ultramarine. A little bit of a shadow there. That one comes in a bit. Just putting in some stuff. And definitely there's always shadow under there, right? This jacket. Now as I'm going, I'm going to add a little more blue into my mix. And then I'm going to get my white. And you can kind of see the denim colors that I was using through her denim. 
to wipe them. I'm going to come here into the vest. Brushing that first color in. I love denim. We're going to be wrapping up with this actually pretty quickly. I'm surprised are, are I'm you? so energetic for it today, too. Well, you know, we can just go record something else. Well, I didn't say it's that energetic. <laughs> I could have had some more acrylic April work to do. <laughs> Don't be crazy. Don't be crazy. All right, just pulling the values. I love pulling the values in this denim. Softly dry brush up into here where the shadows are. Let's really, really bring this line down. Curving here. Curving there. A little more blue into it. A little bit here at the hip. Just dry brushing. And pick up a little more of the blue and you just keep working it through. I'm going to move into my smaller little fiddly bit. Yeah. My fiddly bit. We got all quiet there. I think we hit our 18 minute lull. Was it, have I been lowly for 18 minutes? No, I think it like after 18 minutes, you can kind of go low. I don't know. I think that's some like, there's something I read somewhere that said, you know, after 18 minutes of conversation, people get quiet. Oh, sorry, guys. I'm not supposed Your to be brain quiet. Just... I, in spite of the complainers on YouTube, I'm actually not supposed to get quiet. <laughs> uh, that happens. Coming here, and I'm finding all the highlights, right? That's what we're looking for in our jacket is the highlights and the, the shape. Just softly brushing this brush. You can see that you create that like sense of movement with this little curve stroke. See how that little curve stroke creates a shape there? A shape. Yeah. They pop it. Don't you love shapes? I do. And yeah, a lot of that right there is covered up by flowers, but it's nice to have it even sort of peeking through. A little bit of my Sienna into my mix. A 
and just get those subtle little values happening. Or perhaps not so subtle, right? That was looking really amazing. Is it coming together? Yeah. You got to love it when a plan comes together. John recognizes when I get quiet, so he like knows how to pull me out of it. <laughs> Sometimes, it's just about asking a question. The one he doesn't know is how to get me to, to, to be quiet when he needs me to be quiet. <laughs> like, I got to ask a question. Let me talk. <laughs> this person's asked 30 times in chat. I got to ask you before they ask 31. Because they will. Or 32. And that's okay. You should ask 31, 32 if you need to. Well, sometimes they're just like, you got to get the question, man. I need to know. Why is this blue different than that blue? And sometimes that's super critical. Like, right now, could you be using a phthalo blue? I, I could have used the same blue for both denims. I didn't really want to, but I could have. Yeah. Why, why did you not use them? So do tonal differences? Uh, yeah, I find that denim comes in a lot of total differences. And so sometimes when I'm painting it, I like to reflect on that and have it, re have it represented in my piece. I'm going to highlight right here. And I'm in a scratchy little way. Like you do, you get scratchy with it. Getting scratchy with it. Do, 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 do. Get scratchy with it. Yeah, that's the Mil the Will Smith tribute right there. Get scratchy with it. Apologize to all the Will Smith fans. Can't help it. Just making sure that these things are shaded in shape the way we want to. And it's just like a whole little thing for me. I just keep working it until I find it. What does that mean, until you find it? Well, sometimes in a painting you're looking for a particular result, a particular effect. And sometimes you're very confident and you're right there. You're like, oh, I've got it. You've got it in like three brush strokes. That's a lot of what we'll be doing in Acrylic April. But for some things, sometimes, what you're actually dealing with is that, you know, you don't have it and you're looking for it trying to find it you're like man where is this thing now i'm gonna pop my jacket out a little bit more because i lost my pop as you can see in my enthusiastic painting so i'll get my va shadow value and i'm gonna come from here i'm gonna come up a little bit more see what i'm doing yeah i just lost some of that Make sure that some of that is happening. There we go. And I'm going to get into my bright now. Just a couple places on these particular scenes. I'm going to look at a couple things. So I want to make sure that this is crisply outlined. There we're doing. That we're really seeing that edge. That's funny. I come down this one as well. Using my finger as a bridge. What's funny? So we have a, a young lady who's joining us today. Her, and her last name, her surname is Sherpa. Oh, yes. She had a question about like, why is it? Why is my name Sherpa? And actually that was from an art class. When I first, first started all of this, I was trying to explain to students that, you know, I was here to guide them through the experience and that, I kind of at that time felt like, you know, art's like a very steep climb. It's like a mountain. We just take one step at a time. Like that's how we get up a uh, difficult terrain is just one foot in front of the other. But sometimes we need a guide. And so it came from that idea. Huh. And similar but I think it's really cool that your actual surname is Sherpa. <laughs> I think that's kind of cool, too. But that's a, this is actually a, a people and a job in Nepal. And they have definitely talked. We've had some Paul Sherpas come by and be like, hey, 
Yes, we're we going to <laughs> paint with the Sherpa. And we thought that was just some meta awesomeness. It was kind of just amazing. It was we were like, if the only thing that's going to be cooler is if we could go there and paint with them. Except I'm not in that kind cold. of shape. <laughs> I'm not. I my, I'm not in that kind of shape. Cold. What must I say? I'm taking the shadow. Can you see the little shadow I'm running here? Oh, and that's helping those those jeans pop off. Pop off there. Now we get back into our detail, don't we? Do, 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 do. Get a dark, dark, dark color. Just running little interesting bits of information. The pocket always fun to add. Just get some little pockets. Contribute to stitching. A little stitching. And then when I get that all out, I come back and I do my white lining, which is again a very similar thing. So this time I bring over that color. See how that goes? I'll bring some wrinkles there. I think we definitely need some highlights there. On top of that. There we go. So we've got that denim kind of thought out. We can also pick up a little bit of a highlight around this and around that. Woo! While I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and just trouble myself to put in my dark green because I know what I'm doing next. Don't you guys know what I'm doing next? Let's put our little vines in. How's everybody doing? Are you feeling really okay? Great. Now, even though I am powering through, if you find yourself struggling to see it, if you find yourself getting fatigued, art is actually tiring. I have a lot of experience um, keeping my energy up and being able to power through. I've taught six hours of art class in a day, like back to back to back so there's some stamina there but if you find yourself fatigued put me on pause go have a snack watch your favorite show and come back later it's okay mm. so you don't have actually too much left here to do do you? not very much all right let's get our brown out what we got on our brown we're gonna get a little bit of our black into that right a little bit of our black into that brown for the shadows And it does sometimes take a couple coats of the brown because browns, yellows, all those things, they can be transparent. They can. It doesn't mean that you can't still put in those values, those shadows, those, those effects that you're looking to do. Oh, you know what I did? I got to fix this right here. My shadow went down too far, and I need to take it back up. So, see? Sometimes you'll see something, you'll be like, wait, what? Look at that. There you go. There we go. Happy, happy. It happens. It does. It does. It does. Stuff happens. 
Gonna definitely make that little shadow hair coming up. Because that's how we're going to get that reflection of that hair going. Pay attention to your brush stroke. Now, we're going to come down here. I'm going to make that. Did you see that? That's a curl. Let's make a friend to it. There we go. Curl. Paint more black. Put that in there. And go little hairs that we're going to think about over here now i'm going to get into my burnt sienna and a little less of the black like you do come up to the top of the head i'm going to just very carefully pull this down Catching little highlights just like we did before. Okay. Same thing, same, same. But my paint is super dry. Let's just be a little, you're doing that little twist with your hand there. Yeah, just a little twist. It's just a little, it's a little flick of the wrist. All it takes. Now I'm going to take a little bit of my uh, ochre and my burnt sienna. I'm going to mix those together. I've got a bit of a highlight happening here, right? Some highlight for my hair. Some, come right here. There's a little highlight coming down that. direction can you see the hair yeah starting to happen isn't it find a little highlights in the hair and a little highlight in the hair. There. That's a good little reflection. Ah, this is great. And she is, she's just beautiful. There we go, hair out of nowhere. Just, just appears. It does. Just appears. Just appears. Now, once I have it to that stage, I bet you can guess what's next. The flowers? No, we're going to take a little yellow ochre. Oh, the hair highlight. We're going to put it over by our fluid paint. Looks easier. Right. We may even grab just a just a bit of the pure ochre and go ahead and you know put it a couple places. Not too much. Just a couple places. Yeah. Can be nice. Just 
just give us some depth and some thought that we could we can put in. Now I'm going to take the yellow, the yellow ochre and the white, fluid white. Get my vision enhancers on. And start talking about the details. Have fun. And if it gets too, like, too into that, you can always come back, okay, into your brown. Okay. You're never, never trapped. Now, I am going to put out some more brown, so, because mine is getting a little bit, um, hard to describe, but it's just getting a little bit clumpy. So notice how I sprayed the water onto it. It's going to really help. So I've got this and the yellow ochre in that because brown hair is a little more complicated. Sometimes. I always think it's fun to finish off the hair with long little tendrils. Just have fun with it. Sipping my coffee. Are you sipping your coffee? I am. I see Twix coming. <laughs> Not true. Out of coffee. I'm running low. Well, when you go get some more, you can heat mine up again. <laughs> like, I don't know. I can't. We're switching. I'm, wa I'm working You're switching? Here. It's too hard when I'm, like, doing these, like... We're working here. I can't go make coffee. I just added some black so I could extend some of these... Little tip down here. But you can see how we just create this space. The hair to exist in. That is the best thing ever. Fun, have fun, have fun. Good. It does, doesn't it? Those highlights really make a big difference. Just making that pop right out. Yeah, it just tells us a little bit about the movement. It just tells us a little bit what was happening. Oh, I might switch back into my poo and I might grab a little bit of my not wet burnt sienna. And just make sure that I've got enough highlights on my curl. Wherever you need to go, you've got to just make it work for you. Now, once I've got that in there, we kind of know what the next deal is, don't we? Yeah. Take a little bit of our yellow over to our green now. Make a highlight.
Because it's fun. Who doesn't love a highlight? And she definitely needs what? Daisies. Up in her hair? Oh, yeah. Well, because if that's what they're doing is making Daisy hairband, you've got to have Daisy hairband. Yeah, I mean, like, that is, like, so what you'd have to do if you were talking about, like, being in a field of them, right? Mm -hmm. Now we've got the Ultramarine. And the white, liquid white. The dark petals. So that the white petals will pop. My fluid paint's getting a little gummy, so what I may do is put a little more out. Fresh out that half. Mm -hmm. Because my studio is hot, hot, hot today, weirdly, considering it's cold, cold, cold outside. I think it's because the heater's on and you're in a nice little trapped, warm container. Yeah, I you know. think that that was something to rethink for later. <laughs> well, There's an oven quality to what's happening to me. I think that when the air conditioner on is on, it's nice in there. But when the heater's on, it's a little oven. Yeah, I feel oven. So you probably need to make sure that not when, when I'm filming? filming yeah yeah maybe cuz you're in a nice easy bake oven I feel like I am I feel like I'm in an easy bake Now I'm going to let that dry for a second and while I let that dry I'm going to get my bigger of my brights my number 8 and I'm going to have some fun So first let's take a little of our zincs a little bit and I'm going to just make sure that this is coming down a little bit further you see how I'm scumbling this down? Oh, where are you at? Oh. Right here. Oh. I'm going to just scumble this down just a little oh, bit I further. Sure. Yeah, just a little bit. And this is, again, just to make sure that we've got a little blend happening. We're going to probably be okay, but we just want that, that, that shock there. Shock. Are you shocked? I'm shocked. Shocked we're still here. All right, so I'm going to take a little of my yellow ochre and a little bit of my cad yellow and my green. Okay, and I'm going to build up some of the world. See how I'm going right over where they're running? Go right over. Go right over, man. You can do it. This green is brighter because it's closer. And when greens are closer, they can be brighter. Darker. Richer. So just play with that mix of greens, the ochre, the thalo, let them, let them come forward and be rich and beautiful. And you'll see that this extra layer of green just really helps what's already here pop, doesn't it? Yeah. A little ochre into my green, green. We're just letting those petals dry up top. This is something that we can do while we're letting the petals uh, dry. Right across our little canvas here. Going, 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 going. You can go ahead and also get a little bit of your yellow ochre and your thalo green together. You can touch out some of this bright green. Is the bright green getting touched here? These are like little little leaves that might be in the sunlight. Tap them in. You don't want like, see how it's not like an obvious like big pattern. It's just little spots here and there. That's what you want. Little spots here and there. Because that's what nature gives you is little spots here and there.
I might get a little crazy, but now I'm pretty sure I can go ahead and daisy up my daisies. So the first thing that I could probably do is take my yellow, which is skinning, and grab some fresh version of that. Skinning is where it starts to dry on the top. So sometimes I have to move it over like a custard to get to the yummy underneath. Just putting in a little bright pop of yellow. And just enjoy putting your fresh little daisies in. This one, he could take me down. Now, if you click in the link in the description down below, yes, you'd be able to find yourself traceable. A traceable, a grittable, you can grit it onto your canvas, you can trace it onto your canvas. There is a step-by-step -step photo reference of it where from the from the study that I did. You can see each stage to try to understand where you're trying to get to. I am all about helping you in any way that I can, any way that I can to get through that painting. Because I know if you keep painting, and I know if you keep trying, you're going to get there. Whatever those art goals are, you're going to be able to get to them. The whole reason we're doing Acrylic April. Nothing helps you paint more than painting. Now, there's a lot of techniques out there, but even those techniques, I'll even say to you like this. Even the one stroke is a fabulous technique. I know a lot of great one stroke artists. They work at it. They paint every day. It's not just that you see the stroke, do the stroke, and all of a sudden it's roses all over a cabinet. It's you learn the stroke, you practice the stroke, you get competent in the stroke, then you have roses all over the cabinet. Yeah. So there's no magic bullet. Right? But good news is that there's no like magic sauce because then you get to just. Paint as you want to. And I just want paint. I'm going to put a little more, um, I'm going to put some little bits of white here and there. I'll go into my zinc, I think. And I'm going to imply that there are some little white flowers in amongst these little daisies that are kind of out of focus and up front. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Because it's a mid focus. It's out of focus in the, the background, out of focus in the foreground, in focus where the girls are. That's what we're doing. How's everybody's girls going? Remember, you don't have to keep up with me during these lives. You go at your own pace. You make yourself comfortable first. And then, then. Now, if you're concerned about muddying your colors, do you have any tips for that? Yes. First tip, change your water. Oh, yeah. Second tip, make sure your brush is free of pig pigment. Your brush is clean. Third tip, you have to be aware that sometimes when people change up colors from what I'm doing, and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not insulted. But there's a bias. Look at the difference between the phthalo blue and the ultramarine blue this is to the red this is to the green if you mix this in something that you know and it's almost like a purple here right if i put any yellow into it i'm going to get a muted green if i put yellow into the phthalo blue i'm going to get a bright green because this is muted this is leaning to that green yellow that's all it is a lot of times what muddies up people's colors is that you know there's a bias. Sometimes it's that you bought, so there's bottle craft paint, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of bottle craft paint is not made for mixing. Yes, they, have, they, they generally indicate they've got a special top on them, most of the mm -hmm. brands that have a little, like, this one mixes like you would expect it yeah. to. You're going to want the one that it, it talks about mixability because otherwise you could be really, really struggling and with what you've got to deal with. And that's because there may be pigment colors inside that bottle of paint to make that color. So right. if you were to mix those pigments together in different proportions, they make unexpected and weird colors. 
Very unexpected, weird colors. But that's that's not to say that there's anything wrong with that. It's just the formulation of that particular paint. So you've got to be aware of it when doing that. I just mixed a little bit of phthalo green to my cad yellow and added some zinc white to lighten it. And I'm going to take this across here at this lower edge. It's going to come up these corners. All right, come up these corners. And I'm going to have to put out some fresh paint because mine is thoroughly dried all over my easel. Why am I doing it like this? Don't struggle. You know where it's going to go. You can move the canvas and then not be so, ah, ah, which I was feeling. All right. Now I'm going to put out some fresh color just because it's, it's just gone really gummy for me. Look away. Don't, don't look. See, she's going to do that. Oh, look away. No. You're going to put your paint out there. Mm hmm So I'm going to put out a couple of things. I'm going to put out my yellow. I'm going to put out my ochre. I'm going to put out my green. I'm going to put out my burnt sienna, and I'm going to put out my fluid white. Boop, boop, boop. Now, I'm going to take a little of my phthalo green and burnt sienna, I'm going to mix them together. It's going to give me this dark green, isn't it? Mm. I'm going to get my detail brush. I'll go ahead and make sure I'll wet these so they don't dry out on me. I'm going to add some extra water onto that spot. And even get a little more green into it. But what you want is something that's going to flow off the brush. And look at this. See how dirty my water is? If I want my flowers to be white, I'm going to get some clean water. I'm going to make some little stems in this dark green. And it may be easier for me to flip the canvas upside down to be able to get a nice line to it. And we can kind of see those, can't we? Little dark stems. And then what I'm going to do is take the same palette knife. And I'm going to make another green. Got a lot more yellow in it. Which means I'm going to have to put out some more yellow, but I don't mind. Make sure you put some of the stems on the where the girls are, right? Because they're standing, they're running through a field. Make them some stems longer, some stems shorter. They need some of them need to point different directions. It's important that you pay attention to how that's going. You're using a gray palette paper. Yes. Who is that one by? New Wave. New Wave. Okay. Yeah, this is New a new Wave. company. Um, and they have a brown, which I really love, that looks like wood. They have a gray. They have a white. They have a peel palette that's designed for standing while you paint. So, like, it holds, like, that Bob Ross palette, but it's a peel-away palette for acrylic artists. Sorry, I'm just super excited about that. They they abandoned this at uh, our booth. Well, not our booth, our, our paintbrush company booth. And so we 
We're like, yes, we will use that. But I have a bunch of these. The, all the pallets you've really seen the last six months have been by them. I went to the store and I discovered them. I was like, oh my gosh, I have to have all of these. I'm just making sure of lots of places to put high daisies and low daisies. Oh. Let's get first our yellow, right? We know this. And let's put a little yellow top a bunch of places. These are friendly little fellows. They like to be loved. They don't want to be picked. All right. See how we're going? You yeah. can put some down low. So, you know, know that you can put them lots of places. All the daisies that you see here are kind of like in that focal zone. Now, while that is um, drying, I'm going to go ahead. Using my fluid white paint. Paint little flowers. Like they're just little touches of white, right? Some of them could be opening upwards, they're facing different directions. Have fun. Don't be critical of your daisies. The thing is, the truth is, much like appearance, body weight, self-worth, we have a tendency to see our art in a very bleak way. Right? Yeah. Do you, I guess that's true. That's sort of the natural human experience where we kind of look at ourselves and see all the mistakes. All we see is the mistakes. All we see is the flaws. You don't take the painting in on its totality. You'll take somebody else's painting in on its totality, but not your own. And it's really like you've just got to, got to, got to. Make sure that you think of the painting in the way that you would think of something from somebody you love. Because you'll see those things in a much more kind fashion. Then you'll see your own painting. Have fun. I mean, I move along because, you know, we have a little time scale, but. And, you know, but you don't got to move this fast. Paint at your own speed. Paint at your own speed. There really isn't a speed component of painting. There only is on YouTube because of the way the whole system here works. You know, paint at your own speed. Be your own artist. And because you control that pause, fast forward, slow down button, you can control the speed at which we paint. too. Yeah. Believe you me, John is jealous. I don't know. I kind of like hanging out here. I kind of put little, little petals all around the daisies. I feel like it's just enjoyable. So enjoyable. The way this white pops against that background makes me happy. The way the color palette was. I love this sky. This is oh, really... Oh, yeah. A lot of people commented on loving the sky. It's a lot of fun. It's good to know how... To, if you like the sky, we've got a little pig sitting on a fence. Very similar deal. Weirdly, that would go with this. It's also daisies. <laughs> little pink pig. Every once in a while, somebody finds that terrific lesson and does it. I think it's pretty cool. So what we're going to do after we get through all of this, all these little petals, we're going to do a whole bunch of loose little petals out front because that's sort of out of focus down here. And then we're going to put out little spots of yellow. Excellent. So, 
any questions, this is what I'm going to be doing for about five minutes. <laughs> I can take a few. Well, it's coming together actually pretty fast. No, it really does. It comes together much more quickly than you think. Remember, you can also come in and um, do some focal leaf. Okay? With these little marks. These marks are brilliant because they just feel the leaves can be dark, they can be light. How we do? Little loose leaves out there. Now, while we're at it, you need to have a whole bunch of weird little marks. A whole bunch of weird little marks? What do you mean? I mean, there's a bunch of little flowers up here that are just sort of out of focus. And so how I handled that was I just... Oh, they just, the petals are just glinting and the... Well, they're just, you know, little... Yeah, just out of focus. And then where there's a, a lot of them, I'll put a little yellow dot. This, I would say, this loose sort of expression of flowers, that's probably going to be the hardest for you to find a way to relate to. Because you're going to be like, hmm. No. <laughs> so, here, Trish was asking, why didn't she put the shadows and the daisies in the foreground? Oh, because I wanted them to pop. Ah, so you put shadows in the ones no that are in the back. No real rules to art. Just didn't want to, to be just, real honest. Just, that was just how you made it to want to pop. It's just that's how I chose to get there. But if you wanted them, by goodness sake, go for it. Sometimes it feels like when you're new to painting that there's a hard in set fest rules. And one of the problems is is that some teachers will speak very absolutely, so that will enforce that feeling of absolutism in art. And except for studio safety, which is a big deal and should be, you know, paid attention to. You know, we definitely, definitely want to keep track of studio safety. Yeah. Um, there isn't a lot of rules in art. There are principles that you can learn. There are schools of thought that you can ascribe to. There's skills and techniques that you can master. We certainly have a school of thought yeah. about how we approach that ease of beginner design. But this isn't the only way to go through it. It's not the only way to think about it. A lot of ways to think about it. You know, people will often say, oh, well, beginner art isn't fine art. Not true. Just because you're new doesn't mean that what you're making isn't super valid. I keep pushing on. Sorry. Sorry but we know what I'm doing, right? I'm getting lots of little spots of white. Yes. Like you do. I just mashed the control panel with my hand and it just went blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. That was totally elegant. Now, once I get all those in, I'm going to go and grab a bunch of my yellow. Oh, this is that little touch of sunlight that's pretty you can have little bits of it down here too and you're out of focus daisies again those are the daisies that are going to make you crazy just know that now mm. the out of focus daisies are you're gonna be like i can so if you're really stressed about it just paint them all in focus <laughs> But it is good to learn how to loosen up. I'm hoping at the end of April, a bunch of you will have been able to embrace painting very loosely and expressively, but confidently. That's hard for all of it. It's hard for me to do. Loosen up. It's like saying lighten up. Doesn't have to be any specific place. I just try to put them around places that I think would benefit from that pop of yellow. I'm going to go ahead and wipe my brush off. I'm going to get some dark, dark color. 
and put my name on it. You put your name. If you're selling, just follow the use policy in the description below. Open it all the way up. You know, figure out what's allowed and go for it. Wow. Smudged. It's okay, it was so wet. We'll know which one was the show study. Which one was for the show and which one was for home. Okay, I'm going to turn him. All right. Okay. So there we go. It's not clickbait. I teach these paintings. This is what I do. It's step by step. Yes, there are a lot of words because it takes a lot of words to explain all the techniques. And also we have to keep our energy up. We have to keep our focus up. I really hope that you love this painting. So many of you are painting this for beautiful reasons. You're reconnecting with family members. You're reconnecting with friends. You have a sister in your life that you love. And so this is, I know, a very special painting. I know many of you are changing up the figures in there. Make this your own. Enjoy the journey. I want you to be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and I'll see you at the easel really soon. Bye-bye.